thank you uh, Isu for the detailed and comprehensive explanation of the Osaka Bay Exchange and the products offered in the carbon exchange. Uh, Professor, uh, as we all know that the Kosam Asia holds the distinction of being the world's first exchange to receive the Sharia pronouncement for its carbon exchange and its products. Uh, can you share with us further with us on how the carbon exchange product Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal-mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi syrah lana sudurana wa yasir lana umurana wa ahlul uqdatan min lisanina yafqahu kawlana. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, respected uh, chairperson, Ustaz Sahir, Madam Isu and... Uh, all the participants, I can see about uh, more than 150 participants uh, are with us uh, this morning. Ahlan wa sahlan bikum. Um, this topic is very interesting, even for us at the yeah. Sharia Committee. Uh, to understand the topic, it took us uh, quite some time. Or in fact, it is quite a long time for us to really discuss, uh, to come to the conclusion. Uh, the decision, what is the uh, taki fikihi for this uh, uh, carbon credits. But before I go uh, into that, I think better for me to, uh, I think this has been elaborated by Madam Isu before, but coming from layman perspective, uh, the first question coming into our mind, whether we are uh, from an in relation to Sharia, of course, whether we are selling carbon. Of course, carbon uh, emission uh, is not something can be sold. Yeah, so uh, because I still um, meet people and they ask me, how can you allow carbon to be sold? So it is not, as mentioned or as elaborated earlier, uh, it is not. So it is a full ecosystem where uh, company uh, in its operation uh, emitting carbon yeah so it can comes from uh, directly uh, from their operation or indirectly uh, from uh, scope 2 from the consumption of energy or even scope 3 yeah so uh, in their daily operations uh, they will emit carbon and then uh, of course, uh, when you want to calculate, the calculation uh, for the carbon emission is quite comprehensive. Yeah, Even the car used by the directors uh, will be calculated, for example, the use, the, the, I mean, the usage of energy, so and so forth. So at the end of the day, uh, there are some carbon emissions, I mean, uh, calculated, uh, emitted by this company. And this company, and uh, the second step will do whatever they can do to reduce the carbon emission. For example, uh, the the bulb that they are using, they will uh, convert it into LED, and so on and so forth. So they will do whatever they can to uh, reduce the emission of the carbon. And then after that, uh, there are some still some emission that they cannot, I mean, reduce. For example, the 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 the, the use of um, fuel uh, for uh, flight or for aeroplane. So we do not have any solar aeroplane yet. Yeah. So uh, this is where uh, to uh, to offset this emission, they will buy the carbon credit. Yeah. And then uh, this is in their reporting when they buy the carbon credit. Uh, whatever amount of ton of carbon credit they are buying and then that will be offset against the uh, emission of the carbon uh, in their operation. Uh, so this is the, the whole, I mean, uh, perspective how it works. And when they buy, of course, they will support the, the carbon credit seller, uh, the, the carbon absorption uh, activities. So it will be a full cycle of uh, I mean, uh, maintaining the world uh, from carbon emission. Yeah. So uh, it is not, I mean, uh, 
when when we talk about greenwashing, it should not be use this carbon uh, or credit for greenwashing. Uh, greenwashing means you do whatever you do, uh, you emit as much as you want, then you buy and you offset. So that uh, is not acceptable by the community. Yeah, if you do that, then you will be labeled as uh, greenwashing, and it will not be good image for the company. So this is the, the perspective that uh, we are looking at. And of course, from Sharam perspective, this goal, this objective is very noble. Yeah, this is because when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, in the Jailun fil Abdi Khalifa, there are two key words uh, when uh, we uh, when we want to be created by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. There are two key words when Allah mentioned this to the to the angels. In Nija ilun fil Abdi Khalifa, I will create fil Abdi uh, on the earth. It is not uh, so Khalifa vicegerents or we are the wakil of uh, our uh, creator the almighty so uh, we are the wakil to administer not only the relationship between us i mean human beings but fill up so uh, it will include all this uh, i mean the conservation of the the environment so and so forth because this is uh, the duty of us as the vicegerents of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, can we go? That, uh, that is the introduction. I have only 20 minutes. Uh, I'm fully aware about the, the time. So uh, can we go next? So this is the journey that we took uh, at uh, Shadah Committee of Bursa Malaysia. Uh, together with me, Dr. Prof. Yunus Walhi and uh, Dr. Nku Rabea. And before that, Dr. Shamsia. I think Dr. Shamsia is still with us in this journey. Uh, when we try to uh, have a view on this carbon credit. So finally, after long discussion, after long deliberation, uh, we have issued pronouncement on the 17th of August uh, 2022 about the Bursa Carbon Exchange. And on the 9th of December 2022, it was launched. And again, in 25th September, uh, there is another scope two uh certificate yeah uh, which is the recs then uh, uh, we have also uh, uh, issued the pronouncement on that and then on the 21st uh february 2024 uh, the, the the pronouncement issued then the uh, carbon exchange uh, i mean has hosted this uh, on the 25th june 2024 I mean, go next, uh, Sahil. Okay, the definition, I think, uh, nothing much to add. Uh, it has been elaborated and clarified by uh, Madam uh, just now. So I think I just go straight uh, to the uh, to the Sharia. Or before that, okay, can we go to the slide number six? Yeah. So to understand this, uh, this is new. Uh, even from Sharia point of view, this is a yeah. new... Uh, thing that we need to look into so the the best thing is to look it, at it from legal perspective yeah so what how legal uh, treats uh, carbon credit so uh, when we discuss uh, with a uh, legal team not only from bursa but from uh, also outside the bursa uh, we uh, came to this conclusion that it is definable this carbon credit certificate is definable where there is a certificate with a unique serial number. And then it is identifiable by third parties. Uh, so in case of uh, Bursa, I think we are using Vera. So this there is a methodology recognized by people in the industry that this is the methodology used to calculate uh, the, the carbon credit. Yeah, so it is identifiable by third party as it is recorded on a registry. And then it is uh, another uh, future of it, it is capable of assumption by third parties. Uh, and therefore it is tradable, subject to the rules and the relevant registry. And then it is permanent and stability. It continues to exist on the registry until it is retired or redeemed. So once you offset it uh, through your, for example, uh, financial auditor report 
that you have uh, used it to offset, then it is uh, considered retired or redeemed. And so uh, this is the future uh, that has been acceptable uh, by the legal and also by the people in the industry. So based on this characteristic, we were thinking how to uh, put it uh, from Sharia point of view. And there were some uh, ideas before. Uh, maybe we look at uh, Ujrah mechanism. Ujrah means this is a fee or ju'ala uh, mechanism. Uh, so once uh, there is an, uh, any activities done by a party to absorb carbon and it has been calculated, verified, then we give him ju'ala fee. Uh, so we give him uh, the fee for doing this. So this is one uh, that uh, we are we are we are looking at, and then we look at the, the normal ujra. So because uh, this uh, carbon absorption also will continue, the effort will continue, and maybe uh, it will be an ujra uh, to those people who are doing that. But uh, when we look again. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, I mean, complication if we do it ju'ala, when we do it uh, ujra. And we look at the normal um, uh, asset, uh, whether it, uh, the, the carbon credit certificate can be regarded as, a, as an asset by itself. It is quite interesting. So uh, after that, we look at the, the requirement uh, of assets from a Sharia perspective. Yeah, so uh, we can go to the next slide. So uh, when we look at the literature that we have, I think there are a number of uh, participants here from a Sharia background. Uh, asset can be, uh, or anything can be regarded as an asset from Sharia perspective when generally they fulfill these four uh, criteria. They must have an attached value must be beneficial according to prevalent customs, capable to be owned and controlled. Yeah, therefore, uh, I mean, the, the oxygen in the air cannot be regarded as asset. We cannot charge anybody who take in the oxygen one ringgit because it is still not controlled by anybody. Yeah, but once you put it in a cylinder, uh, like uh, some company, they have uh, processors to put the uh, oxygen in the cylinder, then uh, now it is controlled physically in the cylinder, then that same oxygen can be uh, sold uh, to anybody, to hospital, to, 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 to the other party. Yeah, So must be capable to be owned and controlled. And then must be allowed to be utilized by the Sharia. So uh, this is quite interesting. Then uh, our understanding from legal perspective, from long discussion with uh, many parties related to this effort, then we try to apply this requirement of uh, property and asset. And uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, so when we scrutinize, the first requirement must have an attached value. So when we scrutinize it on carbon credit, uh, we think and we believe that uh, it has fulfilled this requirement because carbon credits are issued from verified projects where the verification process follow a specific standard to ensure the amount of uh, GSG removed or reduced from the atmosphere. And it gives rights to its uh, holders based on the rules of carbon registries, so and so forth. So it has value it really has value uh, to the uh, holder of this uh, certificate. Yeah? And then uh, again, uh, the same uh, goes to the RECs, uh, uh, only that uh, the use is only uh, limited. This is, of course, uh, the regulation that we have, the use only for scope two, not for all the three scopes of uh, man can be used. So uh, it's okay, but still the attached value is there. Yeah, The attached value. Uh, is there. And then we can go to the next uh, acid test that we are conducting must be beneficial according to prevalent customs to manfa'ah hasbal onruf asa'id. So looking at carbon credit, it recognizes the efforts of entities who contributed to carbon reduction project. Uh, 
and then the cooperation must also, as I mentioned earlier, try to reduce their, their carbon emission through other measures before they come and buy the carbon credit for offsetting. Uh, so all this has been uh, from uh, players, from industry point of view, uh, all over the world, this offsetting uh, through uh, the carbon credit has been uh, acceptable. Uh, so it is uh, be beneficial uh, according to prevalent uh, customs or ORUF. And the same goes to the RECs. And then uh, uh, the acid, te acid test number three, capable to be owned and controlled by party. This is number three. Next slide. Yeah. So through the uh, issuance of certificates, through certain methodology recognized uh, and with unique serial number, and then uh, it is uh, registered in the registry. So it is owned and controlled. Yeah, by parties until they are used as offset where they will be retired from the carbon registry. So once you buy it, for example, from a carbon exchange of Bursa, you will own it. And then you can use uh, to offset where after that it will be retired. Or if you are not using it, you can uh, sell it further to any party who want to um, to purchase it. So it is there, it is registered under your name and uh, you can use it or you can uh, redeem it uh, as you like. So uh, you can, uh, in a nutshell, you can own and you can control it uh, as the owner of this carbon uh, credits. Yeah, the same goes to REC of course. And then must be allowed to be utilized by Sharia. Of course, uh, utilization here in offsetting. Yeah. And as I mentioned in my introduction, it is very beneficial. And I don't think Sharia will say no to this. Uh, with that framework, uh, where it is not a greenwashing, it is your effort as a company, now it is voluntarily done by any company, that you want to reduce the carbon emission from your company, but still, of course, there are something that you cannot uh, do away with it. Still, you are emitting uh, the carbon. And with that, you are buying the carbon credit uh, to offset it so that your company in a nutshell will be, uh, I mean, uh, maybe zero, uh, up to zero uh, carbon emission or maybe very uh, limited carbon emission. And when you are doing this, you are encouraging those people who are uh, in the activities of carbon absorption either carbon absorption, of course, as mentioned by uh, Madam in the in the introduction, it can be naturally done. Naturally done through your effort. Of course, you plant the trees, so and so forth, and you make sure that the trees are good, in good condition, or it can be through uh, technologies. Yeah. So I think this uh, utilization by Sharia is very, uh, I mean, uh, you cannot say that Sharia does not endorse this. Uh, it is uh, in line with the, our creation, in fact. Yeah? So uh, the conclusion, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, the nature of carbon credit and RECs, as inten uh, so it is an intangible asset. Uh, next slide. Uh, so you, you cannot see it. It is just in the form of, uh, I mean, certificate. It is intangible asset. Property can be recognized in Sharia, which are considered as property uh, from Sharia perspective. And actually, I have uh, tested it by uh, throwing this idea of what we have done in um, seminar in Dubai, uh, the Majlis. Uh, if you still remember, there was uh, what they call Majlis uh, organized by Standard Chartered Bank, uh, where they have all the Sharia committees of Standard Chartered all over the world uh, meeting in one place. Uh, last year, it was in Dubai. And the uh, theme of the meeting, uh, before the meeting, there, there, there was a conference uh, and the theme was I mean, related to this uh, uh, sustainab sustainable uh, kind of uh, 
I mean the the it was uh, on sustainability yeah so during my presentation uh, I shared what we have done at uh, Bursa Malaysia and alhamdulillah I thought there will be a lot of question but there was a lot of endorsement uh, in, including from the big names in uh, Islamic finance yeah so alhamdulillah I think that was a big endorsement for what we have uh, done at uh, Bursa Malaysia, even though we are the first. Before that, uh, I have been told by one of the the sheikh, uh, I mean, if I say I say his name, uh, all of you will know him. He said that they have started it uh, before, but not in the form of a carbon exchange, uh, I mean, platform, but they have started it in doing suku uh, related to this uh, uh, carbon credits. And they had, they have done it even before us, but it was a suku. Uh, I cannot recall what was the name of that suku. Uh, okay, so I think Ustaz Sahil, uh, I'll stop here. And of course, uh, if there is uh, anything, uh, any question, inshallah, we will try to address. Jazakumullah khairan kathira. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.